Welcome to New Life Today. I am your host, Pastor Greg Tipton, and we have been talking about Smyrna, the poor, rich church. And we're going to go a little bit more into detail on the features and the characteristics of that church coming right up. So in Revelation chapter 2, starting in verse 8, working its way through verse 11, Jesus talks or gives a letter, writes a letter, dictates a letter to this church of uh, Smyrna. And uh, in the previous video, which you should be able to find the link to that in the description, uh, Jesus, uh, or we talk a little bit about uh, the meaning of Smyrna, that uh, it, it typifies, the word itself typifies or pictures um, tribulation, persecution, pressure, trouble, which uh, really this church, you'll know it better because most of the time in your heading in your Bible, it talks about the persecuted church. However, again, I call it the poor rich church, and there's a reason for that, and we'll, we'll see that in just a moment. But we talked a little bit about that meaning, talked a little bit about the church that is um, uh, persecuted and what it meant and when Christ came and the gifts that were given, gold, frankincense, myrrh, or Smyrna, pictured uh, Christ's suffering and his suffering for the innocent the or the guilty. He was innocent, we were guilty, yet he suffered for our sin. But Smyrna itself was not just a city, a church that was persecuted, but Smyrna, the city itself, had a lot of glory attached to it. Uh, the glory of Smyrna, the city of Smyrna, was a political center. Uh, it was a proud city. It was a magnificent city. It's beautiful. Um, it's uh, it was a uh, there was a, a couple of things about it that was uh, characteristic. It was a political center because of Smyrna's loyalty to the Roman Empire throughout all of their civil wars. Uh, they had the uncanny ability of coming out on the winning side of every uh, campaign of war that uh, Rome fought. And so whether, uh, whether it was against other countries or whether it was within themselves, maybe dueling emperors or something of that nature, they always had a way of picking the winning side. And so because of that, uh, they were granted the ability uh, to not be taxed tribute to Rome, and they had their own Roman courts with judges that sat in justice in Smyrna. So they were a part of the Roman Empire, but they were almost an autonomous city. And so they became a great political city in Asia Minor. Uh, it was a city that was a very proud city. The city of Smyrna was uh, the pride of Asia. Smyrna was the first city of Asia. Now, we're talking about Asia Minor here, which is Turkey and those surrounding areas. So when we say Asia, we're not talking about uh, China or Japan or any of those areas. We're talking about Asia Minor. And so there they were the pride of Asia Minor. It was uh, Smyrna, which was the first city of Asia. It was also the center of Caesar worship in the eastern part of the Roman Empire. Uh, Smyrna was a municipality of pride and, and vanity. They, they had a lot to be proud of. Uh, they were beheld as a glorious city. In fact, uh, when they had faltered for just a little while, uh, over about a 300-year period, it was Alexander the Great that came back after he conquered and took Smyrna. It was he that rebuilt Smyrna to its former glory and even beyond. And it became once again a beautiful bastion uh, of pride and vanity. To Smyrna, though, the issue was that worldly things were the first and the last. And God was not supreme. Now, this is important for us to pay attention to because that's kind of where we are in our world today. And not just in our world, but in America. Uh, in America, worldly things are first and they're last. Uh, the creature comforts the uh, great things. They 
are the first, they're the last, they're the things we work towards. They're the things that we will actually work ourselves to death for and kill ourselves for, to have stuff and to be able to do stuff and to enjoy stuff. And so we find that as the first and the last, we will sacrifice family. We will sacrifice our spiritual walk. We will sacrifice friends. We will sacrifice our health. So many things in order to gain a hold of those worldly things. So when Jesus introduces himself, now remember in previous videos, I talked about this, that every time Jesus introduces himself, he does it in a manner in which is significant to uh, this, uh, to, to that particular church. So it is something that they would uh, pay attention to. It is something that would get their attention and, and they would say, hey, wait a second, here's, uh, here's something that we need to, to listen to. But sometimes they wouldn't necessarily heed. But isn't that really kind of like all of us? I mean, we get a message. Maybe it's from the Word of God. You know, I, I forget what preacher it was that made this statement, but truer words were never uttered when he said, prayer is me talking to God, but me reading the Bible is God talking back to me. And sometimes we'll read our Bible, we'll read the word of God. And from those pages will leap off at us uh, a message from God to our heart, to our spirit, and we will hear it, but we won't necessarily heed it. And this is what uh, Smyrna kind of uh, did. And so when Jesus introduces himself to the church of Smyrna as the first and the last he who was dead and came back to life. To Smyrna, they themselves and everything that was in their city to them was all in all. And that's what they press towards. But Jesus is about to talk to them just a little bit. There is a um, division uh, in this city. There is a group that is called Christians and there is the city itself. But within this, and we're going to look at this in another video here, but in this division, you had those who professed the kingdom. You had those who professed Christianity, but they didn't uh, possess it. They f fell short of a true and contrite confession. And we're going to see that here in just a moment. But you you dealt with a city that was divided in its loyalties. And now you're beginning, you're going to see a church and believers that are going to come under great pressure and great struggle because of the makeup and the characteristic and the attitude and the spirit of the city in which they're living in. And that is relevant for us today because as Christians, for all who name the name of Christ, Paul would say this, those who name the name of Christ, let them depart from iniquity. All of us who name the name of Christ right now have to depart from the things that are going on in this, uh, in our, in our country around us. That is, uh, that is trying to remove God uh, that is trying to remove the word of God, that is trying to remove absolute truth, that's trying to remove absolute morality, that is trying to remove the pillars and the foundations that uh, were placed in this, uh, this republic uh, that we live in. That's, that's another thing. I'm going to get on a soapbox here for just a second. I hear people talk about, oh, democracy is dying in America. Well, America is not a democracy. America is a representative republic, a representative form of government. Here's what that means. In a democracy, if 51% says they want something or something should be a certain way, then the 49% have no voice. So if 51% uh, in a democracy decide that it would be more advantageous to eliminate uh, those who can't care for themselves, uh, eliminate those who are not as healthy as others, uh, eradicate certain forms of religion, uh, eradicate certain lives, 
uh, then the 51% have the ruling majority. That's how a democracy works. But our representative form of government, God bless our founding fathers uh, for the way they set up, those individuals set it up where the smallest voice is as loud as the largest voice. So the minorities also have the same resounding effect as the majorities in our representative form of government. And so when we vote, we are sending our voice through those individuals that we vote for. And so I'm sorry I got on my little soapbox there, but it, it, it really gets me when we talk about this being a democracy. We are a republic. But in this, Jesus says, listen, I am your all in all, and there is nothing that you need that is beside me. And so they are going to deal with some struggling, and there's going to be two sides and unfortunately, it's going to seem as though those who are Christians have got the least voice and they have no power. They have no authority. It just seems that way because with God, I've heard it said this way, with God, one is a majority. And so we're going to look at that in some upcoming videos. Until then, I pray you find new life today.